what if I told you the United States is secretly reviving a billion dollar mine hidden deep in the Mojave Desert, California? A facility so critical, it's shaking global powers to their core. Rare earth elements. They are the unseen lifeline behind smartphones, electric vehicles, fighter jets, and missile systems. Yet one nation dominates the world's supply and America's entire tech infrastructure hangs precariously on their goodwill. Imagine waking up to find every piece of advanced technology suddenly paralyzed because that nation decided to flip a switch. And recognizing this very vulnerability, the U.S. is quietly resurrecting an abandoned mine. But can this forgotten desert facility truly secure America's tech future? Or is it already too late? Hidden beneath your smartphone screen, inside the electric car parked in your driveway, and woven through the wind turbines quietly spinning on distant hills, lies a group of metals that hold the modern world hostage. Rare earth elements. 17 obscure chemicals you've likely never heard of are the lifeblood of 21st century technology. Neodymium, disprosium, terbium, names that sound like ancient spells, yet without them. Everything from missile defense systems to your electric toothbrush would simply stop working. But there's a catch, and it's a big one. If China shuts the tap, your Tesla might never start again. And it's not just about cars. Over the last three decades, one country quietly positioned itself at the heart of this rare earth revolution, China. Thanks to visionary policies by leaders like Deng Xiaoping, who once famously declared, the Middle East has oil, China has rare earths. Beijing rapidly monopolized these vital resources. Establishing sprawling operations from Myanmar's hidden mines to Africa's resource-rich landscapes, China has strategically locked down global supply chains. Today, nearly 90% of all rare earth processing and production happens within China's borders. But China's grip goes even deeper. It doesn't just dig rare earths from the ground, it refines them turns them into magnets and alloys, builds the chips, motors, and missile systems, and then assembles the final products, from iPhones to drones, before exporting them to the world. Every stage is handled in-house. It's like owning the farm, the flour mill, the bakery, and the delivery trucks. No middlemen, no competition. That level of control allows them to dominate prices, suppress competitors, and wield extraordinary geopolitical leverage. When China imposed export restrictions in 2025 on seven critical rare earth minerals, the ripple effect was immediate. Major U.S. tech and defense companies like Tesla, Ford, Lockheed Martin, and Apple raised alarms. Tesla halted Model S and X orders in China. GM scaled back EV production plans. Apple faced potential delays in iPhone shipments due to restricted access to vibration motor components. Even the Pentagon was spooked as F-35 jet production relies on over 400 kilograms of rare earth materials. The message was clear. China could cut off America's tech engine with a single policy shift. Suddenly, America faced a stark reality. Critical defense systems, cutting edge technologies, and entire industries were at China's mercy. It wasn't just about economic stability national security hung in the balance. The Pentagon scrambled behind closed doors. In a remote corner of California, something stirred. Satellite footage leaked online showed trucks, cranes, and guards, but no one knew what for, yet. While the U.S. scrambled, China expanded its reach. From Myanmar and Afghanistan to Kazakhstan and the Congo, China wasn't just building alliances, it was embedding itself into the mineral lifeblood of the planet. In Myanmar, over 70% of its heavy rare earth imports now come from Chinese-operated mines. In Kazakhstan, new smelting facilities are underway. And in Africa, Chinese investments now touch 15 of the DRC's 19 largest mineral operations. And then came America's response. Rather than solely banking on domestic solutions, the U.S. embarked on an ambitious, multi-front strategy overseas. Australia quickly became an ally of choice, 
with collaborative agreements accelerating at Mount Weld and Brown's Range. Simultaneously, America reached out to Africa, nurturing vital projects in Tanzania and Zambia, aiming to break China's monopoly on processing facilities. Greenland also emerged as a critical partner, with high-tech aerial surveys laying the groundwork for future extraction at the promising Tan Breeze site. But America didn't stop there. Diplomatic channels buzzed with negotiations in countries like Vietnam and Brazil, while exploratory talks ramped up with Canada and India, potential heavyweight contenders in the rare earth space. These alliances promised not only diverse sources, but also strategic depth against China's dominance. Yet even as these new alliances formed, significant roadblocks surfaced. Back home, America grappled with its most glaring vulnerability, the absence of robust domestic processing facilities. Despite extensive global outreach, the uncomfortable truth persisted. Every ounce of raw material mined in the U.S. still had to be processed overseas, primarily in China. With each shipment sent overseas for processing, the urgency to reclaim control on American soil intensified. Meanwhile, the competition surged ahead. In May 2025, China deployed over 100 autonomous electric mining trucks in Inner Mongolia, powered by Huawei's cutting-edge 5G advanced network. These fleets operate with precision and efficiency, positioning China at the forefront of extraction efficiency, thanks to years of investment in automation and AI. While America struggled to break ground, its competitor was already optimizing mining with AI. In response, a confidential initiative unfolded. To overcome this critical gap, an ambitious, secretive domestic initiative sprang into motion. Led by the Department of Defense, the U.S. swiftly allocated massive investments into establishing full-scale refining capabilities within American borders. Cutting-edge technology and unprecedented regulatory measures emerged practically overnight. At the heart of this initiative stood an abandoned Mojave Desert mine, now buzzing with activity. Satellite images showed rapid developments and enhanced security, sending a clear message globally. America was making its boldest strategic move yet, drawing the immediate wary attention of global competitors. Deep in California's Mojave Desert, a once abandoned mine is making headlines and turning geopolitical tides. Welcome to Mountain Pass, America's boldest strategic move in decades. Once forgotten, this site is now a fortress of innovation and determination, standing as America's beacon of rare earth independence. Mountain Pass began humbly in 1949, an accidental discovery by prospectors hunting uranium. Quickly recognized for its potential, it became the epicenter of America's rare earth mining. During the television boom of the 1960s, European mind here brought color TV to American homes, cementing Mountain Pass's legacy as a cornerstone of technological advancement. Yet, by the turn of the century, environmental challenges and fierce Chinese competition silenced its machines, pushing it into abandonment. Then, in 2017, MP Materials entered the scene, acquiring this strategic asset for just $20.5 million, a staggering bargain for America's future. A bold $1.25 billion revitalization effort called Project Phoenix was launched not just to mine, but to fundamentally reshape America's rare earth capabilities. The revival began swiftly, restoring operations and ramping up production. By 2021, Mountain Pass was extracting over 40,000 metric tons of rare earth oxide annually, enough to meet 15% of global demand. But the goal wasn't merely extraction. America needed refining independence. From 2020 to 2023, MP Materials constructed state-of-the-art separation and refining facilities on site. Pioneering eco-friendly processes, recycling water, and achieving complete domestic production of separated rare earth elements. For the first time in decades, these refined products, especially neodymium and praseodymium, powered everything from Tesla motors to F-35 fighter jets. Yet critical vulnerabilities remained, particularly in processing heavier rare earth elements, HREs, 
vital for advanced military tech. Recognizing the urgency, the Department of Defense stepped in with a $35 million grant to build dedicated heavy rare earth processing facilities. Mountain Pass was rapidly becoming America's strategic stronghold against supply disruptions. But MP Materials wasn't stopping there. Taking integration to unprecedented levels, the company announced a groundbreaking magnet factory in Fort Worth, Texas, partnering directly with giants like General Motors. By 2025, the factory aimed to churn out 1,000 metric tons of rare earth magnets annually, re-establishing U.S.-based magnet production after decades of total dependence on China. The message was clear. No longer would American industries rely on offshore production. Simultaneously, Project Upstream 60K began, targeting an ambitious 50% production increase to 60,000 metric tons annually. Employing advanced processing technologies, this push promised greater efficiency, lower costs, and a drastically reduced carbon footprint. The scale and strategic implications of Mountain Pass's revival cannot be overstated. With nearly 3 billion pounds of rare earth oxide resources beneath its soil, this site alone could sustain America's technological and defense sectors for generations. The modernization has already created hundreds of construction jobs and promises hundreds more permanent positions. Beyond jobs and economic gains, Mountain Pass symbolizes a newfound American resilience in critical technology supply chains. Every Tesla Model 3 rolling off assembly lines, every cutting-edge F-35 soaring into the skies, and even the smartphone you hold depends on the products emerging from this mine. Should China ever attempt another rare earth embargo like in 2010, when prices spiked by 700% overnight, the U.S. now stands prepared, buffered by Mountain Pass's strategic foresight. Ultimately, Mountain Pass isn't just a mining project. It's a national strategic asset. Industry analysts say the site has evolved into one of the most advanced, vertically integrated rare earth operations outside of Asia. Is this monumental effort enough to end China's monopoly? Or is the U.S. too far behind? We want your take. Share your thoughts below. Is Mountain Pass America's game changer or just a costly attempt at playing catch up? We'd love to hear from you. Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this insight valuable, subscribe to our channel and share this story. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to each and every one of you who gave your valuable time to watch this video till the very end. We'll see you in the next one.